In this video, you'll learn how to make perspective animations or rotation animation in Camtasia. So let's get started. A lot of people had asked me in my last video that how I made that cool intro of my screen getting animated in perspective in my last video. So I thought of why not share how I made it with you guys. By the way, thanks to Dark Rises and a few others for suggesting this video in my last video's comment section. Alright, so here I've got two footages right here. One is a footage of my screen, the same footage I used for my last video, the intro of my last video. I'm going to be using this footage and this one for my background image. And this is the footage which I'm going to be using. So first thing you want to do is that you have to install Camtasia onto your computer and then just open it up and then just import the media onto your computer. I'm, going to, I'm just going to import both of these, the footage and the background. Click on open and then from here you have to drag the background onto your timeline and your footage or media that you want to animate onto your timeline again. As soon as you've done that, you can just play just to make sure that you've got the right footage. So I've got the right footage right here. It's just a 22 second video. Now, before you start animating in perspective, you should understand how animation works. The visual properties of an object are what is important when animating. An object's visual properties are made up of the scale, the opacity, the rotation, and the position. Camtasia has a whole tab called the properties tab in which you can adjust all of this. Now here if I select my footage from the timeline, here we've got the properties tab that is showing all the properties of my footage or the media on my project. Every property setting has a slider which you can adjust. For example, here we've got a slider for the scale option so that you can increase the size or decrease the scale of the media. I'm going to reset it. You can even adjust anything directly from the canvas by dragging by dragging the corners to decrease the size or, ro or to rotate the object or the media on your canvas by clicking on the circle, this green circle right here. I'm going to reset it back again. Also, all the changes that you apply on the canvas will be reflected on the properties tab. So if I decrease the size, as you can see, it's showing up the changes I made onto my media. Now here is the timeline where we dropped in our footage. The properties we changed earlier are constant, so if we scale the object in the properties panel, the whole footage from start to finish will be scaled up and, and there isn't any sudden animation that makes the footage or media to increase in size. So if you want the size of the object to increase in size in a particular part of the footage, you can do that by clicking on the animations tab and then clicking on animations and then Drag the custom animation onto the track you want to apply an animation. And then make sure you're zoomed in so that you can look at the footage freely, the track freely. Now here, these animations or keyframes are shown as arrows directly on top of the media in the timeline. This animation is a change from one set of properties to another. The length of the animation arrow or keyframe indicates how long the change will take or the speed of the animation. When you add a new animation or keyframe onto your track, there won't be any change to the object or to the whole footage. That's because it's transitioning between one set of properties and another set of properties that are identical or the same. To adjust what you want the animations to do, first select the media in the timeline. After that, drag the playhead to the end of the media or just double click on the keyframe. Or you can even click on the, the smaller circle right here to adjust the beginning of the keyframe. I'm just going to double click on it so that by default your playhead moves to the end of the keyframe. Now let me just change the position of the media in the canvas or by using the slider in the properties panel. I'm going to rotate it, change the position of it and increase the size as well. Now let me hit the play button to have a look on what kind of animation I just did. So if we play it, as you can see it's increasing in size, it's rotating and it's moving to the right. Let me play it again. So we've just made a basic animation in which our footage in the beginning looks like this and in the end it's transitioning into this set of properties where it's rotating, increasing in size and moving to the right. So we've just made a basic animation. You could even copy animation by right clicking on the keyframe and then click on copy, move the playhead where you want to paste it, select the media on the track and then you have to right click and then click on paste. 
that will paste the keyframe. If you right click on the keyframe, there is an option for the animations easing. We've got auto, which is exponential easing, linear or no easing, spring and bounce. Each one is great for different things and the default one is auto. Exponential easing moves the object at a variable speed, moving slower at the beginning and then speeding into the finish. Bounce and spring both add extra motion to the end of the animation to add a more real life feel. And animations with linear selected moves at a constant speed without any change in speed during the whole animation. Now that you know what animations are and how keyframes work in Camtasia, let me explain how perspective animation is done. It's done the same way as how you do with basic animation, but the visual property you are changing this time is the rotation, which is the X, Y, and Z axis. So let me just delete this keyframe, go back to the animations tab, and then let me just drag one more custom animation to show you guys how perspective animation works. Once again, double click on the keyframe, and then in the right side, instead of changing the scale, opacity, or the position, we're going to be changing the rotation. We've got the default Z rotation, the Z axis rotation, where it's moving like this. And we've got the Y rotation, where it's rotating in this way, the Y axis. And, the one, and one more, we've got the X axis rotation, which moves, which rotates the object like this. Let me reset it. And now I'm going to set to start. Now, now first, I'm going to double click on the keyframe. And I'm going to set the rotation of the Y axis to move like that. And if you play it from the beginning, it's transitioning from this set of properties to this. So let me play it. As you can see, we just made a cool basic animation. Let me just delete the background for now. Let me just hide it to show you guys how I made it. If I play it, that's the animation we just made where, the, where it's transitioning from this set of properties to the Y axis changing by 33.7 degrees, minus 33.7 degrees. Now let me just show the background once again. And then again, I'm going to add another animation to show you the, the rest of the uh, rotation option right here, the Z and the X axis. So let me just drag the any keyframe right here, decrease the speed of it, double click on the keyframe, and this time I'm going to be changing the X axis rotation like this. I'm going to make it to zoom in to the date and time. And then let me just play it. Now that's the animation we just made where it's zooming in to the, to the date of that screen recording. This is the date of the screen recording. If you play it once again, from the beginning, it's first doing that rotation and then it's zooming into the date and the X axis is rotating by minus 3.5 degrees. So how cool is that? I'm going to drag in one more animation to show you guys. This time I'm going to double click on the keyframe, reset everything. So it's default settings. This time, I'm going to set the position. I'm just going to decrease the size like that. I'm going to change the Y axis rotation like this, like that, and the X axis like this. And now I'm just going to play it here. As you can see, we've got this final cool animation in which everything is getting reset and we've got the animation changing into this where the y-axis is changed by 21.8 20, degrees and the x-axis by 28.6 degrees and the scale is by 83.1 percent let me play it once again and yeah we've made that animation as well now the final thing you've got to do is that you're going to export it to do that click on the big export button in the right side and then click on local file and here click on next and then next once again make sure you uncheck this box that says produce with controller Click on the size tab, set the video size, the video setting to any frame rate you want, and the H and the H.264 profile and the level and the quality of it and the color mode. I'm gonna set it to HDTOE. The audio settings to 32, 320 kbps. Click on next, next once again, and then set set the browse to where you want to save it. I'm gonna save it on my desktop. Click on save and then finish. And we'll start exporting it onto your desktop. Just have to wait for it to render the footage. And that's all you've got to do. And you just have to wait for you to render the project and then you can just have a look at your cool looking perspective animation. And yeah guys, that's how we make perspective animation in Camtasia. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give this video a like and share with your friends. And once again, thank you Dark Rises and a few other people for suggesting this video in my last video's comment section. 
and please hit the subscribe button to help me make more videos like this till then see you later thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one